After 36 years, Argentina won a World Cup final again, sparking a football carnival on the streets of Buenos Aires. Four million people on the street or five million, no one knows exactly. A demonstration how much football matters to this country. Football here is a religion, more than anywhere else in the world, it seems. There is hardly any other country in the world where football is a matter of life or death. As I found out on the very day of the 2022 World Cup final in Buenos Aires, when big emotions came to town washing away everything else. But why? I came here to Buenos Aires to find out more about this extreme form of passion. El fútbol ha sido el vehículo por excelencia para no solo para soñar, sino también para realmente escapar. Para mí es el, lo único que estamos los pinchas por una sola cosa, ver a Argentina ganar. What does this tell us about fandom as a whole? Why are people football fans? What is the real power of football? Chapter 1, the day of the final. Well, the day started quietly. Thousands gathered in parks to watch the final against France on giant screens. They came to cheer for Argentina. The first indicator of a religion, their spiritual leader is a Jesus-like figure. There are some fans who want Argentina to win because of just one man. I wonder, is it all about this dude? Or is it about the whole team? Messi, the Messiah, attracted football fans from all over that day. Take this guy from Australia. It doesn't matter where we are from all over the world, except for France. We just want to see Messi win the World Cup. Or these folks from Israel. Okay. Why do you all wear Messi jerseys? Because it's the God. Messi is God. God. Messi the God of football. It's the heart of the team. Messi alone is a religion, it seems. But not just him, as the rest of the day would show. The fans belted out the Argentinian national anthem as if there were no tomorrow. And soon total excitement, penalty for Argentina. Complete mayhem, the air gets filled with some kind of foam, the passion is real. But then also these scenes, France come back from being 2-0 down out of nowhere. Grown-up people in despair, in tears, in deep frustration voodoo-like gestures, from screams of joy to a feeling that death is imminent. But wait! 3-2 to Argentina in extra time. And these fellows cry like they only will again the day their kids will be born. The passion is not just real, but even somewhat unreal. There is another goal for France. Penalties. Nail-biting suspense. Until this shot delivered Argentina the World Cup. So what we're going to do is we're going to go there, because that's going to be a hell of a party, I believe. Argentina's triumph sparked an atmosphere reminiscent of a revolution. Millions flocked towards the city's heart, the obelisk. It was infectious. I felt like singing along and hugging random people. A historic day, but in the middle of all these lunatics, I thought again, how on earth can football be the spark for all this? Let's first ask the Argentinians, and then let's see if there is any relevance for the rest of humanity too. 
Chapter 2, the day after. Public transport was back on and so was life. The party seemed to have ended, although the streets were looking very hungover. Still, this seems to be a good moment to ask people with a bit of distance, maybe, why yesterday was Armageddon. The first hint comes from a prolific Argentinian football writer, Marcela Mora Yaraujo. She's in a lucky position because she witnessed all three Argentinian World Cup titles so far, 1978, 1986 and 2022. There con una población compuesta de inmigrantes de muchas partes del mundo, todos muy diferentes, y que a través del fútbol han logrado eh, construir una especie de fantasía, si se quiere, de, de unión y de identidad nacional. Argentina, in fact, has the second largest number of immigrants in the world, second only to the United States, ahead of countries such as Canada, Brazil and Australia. Argentina saw massive waves of immigration in the 19th and 20th centuries. The tango became the dance of all the different folks that had newly arrived. But other than that, this melting pot often lacked a common denominator. And this is where football came in as a national symbol often stronger than anything else in the country. El fútbol para nosotros es todo. Era para chico, para grande, para todo, humilde, gente humilde, gente que tiene y que no tiene, lo festeja igual. Entonces lo vas a ver a cualquiera de la calle siempre a veces con una camiseta. Esos son los colores que llevamos todos. Creo que genera una situación colectiva, un sentimiento colectivo de compartir algo que nos gusta la mayoría, no todos, ¿eh? porque hay gente que no, que siempre se respeta, lo que no le gusta. Pero a quienes nos gusta, nos genera algo de comunidad. Genuine joy and unity, even for those who saw their own teams defeated by Argentina and Qatar. I met Ima from France in Buenos Aires. Her country lost the 2022 final, a total minority, and she still felt like singing along with the champions. For example, for the matches of qualification in Argentina, we have seen it. Everyone closes their commerce. Et ils ferment leur commerce. Euh, on a l'impression que c'est un jour férié pendant qu'il y a les matchs. Et nous, on était là. C'est juste les huitièmes. Pourquoi ils font ça OK, one point has been made so far. Football passion equals a feeling of unity in Argentina. Pero eso no explica por qué Argentina sí y Chile no. Otra eh, línea que uno puede explorar es el lo temprano que llegó el fútbol a este país, la creación de clubes, las ligas bien armadas. Y yo creo que finalmente una cosa que no podemos, digamos, eh, no marcar la importancia que ha tenido es la cantidad de enormes jugadores que han salido de Argentina al mundo y conquistado corazones. Football was introduced to Argentina in the second half of the 19th century by, of course, British immigrants. The first league was contested in 1891, the oldest league in the world outside of Great Britain. The epic Argentinian figures Diego Maradona and Lionel Messi did not grow out of a country with no football tradition. But when speaking to Argentinians, there are also other explanations to be heard. Un pueblo que ha necesitado siempre alegrías, que no ha tenido tantas, ¿no? Se nutre un poco de esto, ¿no? Y esta alegría que es real, auténtica y genuina y que es del pueblo, como todo el mundo la pudo ver, es lo que nosotros necesitamos, ¿no? Para poder seguir adelante, ¿no? O sea, esto fue vamos a recargarnos. There are many open wounds in Argentina. One, for example, is the military dictatorship the country lived through from 1976 to 1983. While people were being killed by the regime, Argentina won their home World Cup in 1978. Another wound, repeated economic crises, hitting the country hard. Football can help provide role models on how to survive. Entonces, tener un equipo con lo que hoy cuesta, 
formar un equipo en el nivel que sea, seas un profesional, seas político, seas estudiante, armar un equipo es muy importante. Argentina's inflation reached the highest peak in decades in 2022. But it is a problem that has been around for a long time. Already in 2001, there was a severe crisis. People took to the streets and looted supermarkets. Now, COVID and Russia's war against Ukraine has made an already difficult situation worse. Four out of ten Argentinians lived below the poverty line during the World Cup in Qatar. In such a reality, football is also symbolic, such as when Gonzalo Montiel converted the decisive penalty of the World Cup final. The son of a construction worker and a cleaner from a humble background. Sufrir es nuestra resiliencia, es lo que más valoramos en Argentina, para sobreponernos a todo. Y bueno, la selección dio una, una, buena, una buena noticia al mundo, que, que en Argentina existimos, que no somos solamente sudamericanos. Tenemos valor y mucha fuerza. Y estamos realmente pasando dificultades. Pero bueno, tratamos de superar, siempre con la frente en alto. Visibility, another reason that makes Argentinians proud when they win the World Cup. And even more so if they win it against a country like France. Un pueblo tan, eh, con, tanta, con tanta desgracia, tan eh, tercermundista, que hayamos podido ganar una Copa Mundial frente a eh, países del primer mundo, ¿no? Ganar algo tan importante. Y un poco de, de cambiar un poco el curso de la historia por un ratito. Daniel Pasarela, que fue el capitán que ganó el Mundial en 1978, me dijo una vez, recuerdo perfecto, que en el fútbol es, es, la única, es el único rubro en el que podemos mirar al primer mundo a los ojos y, y, y estar enfrentados de igual a igual. Y yo creo que esto es algo que mucha, mucha de la población argentina tiene... Eh, internalizado, digamos. Chapter 3. Let's dive a bit deeper still, if possible. Maybe the mayhem in Argentina when they win the World Cup tells us even more. More about the importance of 22 people chasing a ball around on a field. Does football also tap into national psyches outside of Argentina? I guess if we look closely enough, yes. Take Germany host of the 2006 World Cup, a country that could finally feel comfortable waving its own flag again, 60 years after it set the world on fire. Take France in 1998, World Cup hosts and winners, when it celebrated its own diversity as an immigrant country. Or take Morocco in 2022, a team that served as a sort of pan-Arabian source of pride, appealing to an entire region and to many around the world. But still, let's not exaggerate the power of football. The football eh, reflects muchas cosas de la sociedad en la que existe, pero no es una herramienta transformativa, digamos. No tiene un significado más allá de de su de su existencia. Lo que sí me parece, como cualquier eh, expresión cultural de gran difusión tiene la capacidad de, digamos, de llevar mensajes, de distribuir ideas y, y, y es un gran negocio además. Big business for sure, but then again there are these very special moments when it seems like the World Cup really is for the players and the fans, briefly at least. La energía que hay es buena, ¿no? La energía positiva tira para adelante todo. O sea, ese no se puede ir en contra de eso, ¿no? Y hoy, ahora se siente. Hoy sentía conduciendo en ¿no? el auto, no había agresión, no había... Estaba todo super ok, ¿no? O sea, ¿qué pasó? Fútbol, increíble. Si eres argentino, por nacionalidad o por cualquier otra conexión que might feel, let us know in the comments what you think. Also, if you're a football crazy and from any other country around the world, please don't hesitate to give me your take on the real power of football. Thanks for watching, congratulations and felicitaciones to Argentina.